I've always believed you can take a good photo with pretty much any camera, but the type of camera or lens will have quite a big impact on your experience of taking photos and the photos that you create. That could be using a zoom lens, like a 24 to 70, or it could be switching to a digital medium format system, like the GFX 100 S2, which I've got here and I've got on loan from Fujifilm UK for a couple of weeks. I've previously owned the GFX 50S and I've really enjoyed that system for more intentional photographs around my local area. It also gave me a lot of confidence for approaching strangers for portraits, something about having a very big chunky camera system. I don't know, made me feel a bit more like a professional photographer and made me feel like I had a bit more of intention when asking people for portraits. I don't know how that works. It's all psychological, of course. I was lucky enough to recently get to work with Fujifilm UK on the launch of the X100 6 and the X-T50. Uh, there's a really fun campaign video out now on their YouTube channel. I'll link it below if you fancy a look. I get to approach a few people for portraits. It's pretty fun. But uh, once we wrapped on the campaign, I said I'd really like to try the GFX 100 S2. And they kindly said, sure. Here you go. And I also borrowed the uh, GF lens, the 45 2.8. I think this is like a 33 mil equipment lens, so wide angle that I'm pretty comfortable with. So the day after it arrived, we had a Framelands community meetup in central London. We went to a March for Nature protest in central London. About 100,000 people showed up. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to try out this camera, maybe ask a couple of people for portraits. The rest of the video is me doing my usual walk around the Thames, up and down the River Thames, around Twickenham, Richmond, Brentford area. Just gonna go out with the camera, take some photos, talk about my impressions using it, and then maybe later on I'll drop the files into Lightroom and we'll do some pixel peeping because 100 megapixels you might as well, right? If you're watching this video in 4K, which is the highest resolution you'll be able to, the images will only be like eight megapixels. So it's kind of like, you know, you're not getting the full, you're not getting the full picture, excuse the pun. So yeah, we'll drop them into Lightroom, do some editing, do some pixel peeping, check out the dynamic range and see what these files are all about. A lot of chat at my kitchen table. Let's go out and actually take some photos with the Fujifilm GFX 100S Mark II. So my first outing with the GFX 100S2 was at our latest Framelines community meetup. We all met up in central London. Um, coincidentally, the March for Nature protest was going on, which kind of took over the whole of central London. Managed to take a few street-ish shots, also stop a couple of people for portraits. And then the uh, meetup actually ended up at the pub, which it always does. We had a few drinks and I took this photo, which I'm like kind of happy with. It's kind of fun, I think, with the horse and cart going past the Houses of Parliament. It looks uh, like it could be timeless, but it's also not. And uh, yeah, really impressed with the dynamic range from the GFX for this one too. Out and about along the River Thames now with the GFX. Got that really nice pastel sky, some nice early summer light, the green of the trees. This is my favorite kind of shooting condition. Really lovely colors all around and taking advantage of them with the GFX. That's the thing with these bigger sensors is that sort of medium format look. You do definitely get a, a different look versus smaller sensor cameras. You get just an extra element of depth of field, but it's not too over the top. It's quite uncanny. It gives it this kind of like 3D, very interesting look and the dynamic range as well. Yeah, I do love that extra bump of dynamic range because I'm a sucker for boosting shadows, you know?
So just wanted to very quickly mention that you may have noticed that we actually don't have any sponsors on our channel. That's because Framelines is 100% supported by our magazine and our Patreon, which is our Framelines community. Our latest magazine, issue eight, is out now. And we also have the Framelines community where we set regular assignments. We run meetups in London and maybe more around the UK. But we've also tried to put more work into our blog on our website as well. So a free resource with tips and advice from street and documentary photographers. So if you want to check it out, head to frame-lines.com it's all there. It's all good. Yeah, I, uh, I love the GFX system for this more like local style of photography. I mean, you can absolutely use it for street, but it's, I mean, it's definitely not as fast as an X-T5. So you have to be, uh, be able to anticipate shots a bit more with GFX systems, in my opinion. Still perfectly capable. And the autofocus on this new one is much faster than my old 50S. And it has something like seven frames a second, which is, <laughs> I mean, I would never use that on an X-T5 or an X-Pro, but nice to have, I guess. I also really like using GFX system for taking photos of my son. I like, again, the depth of field with it. I like a shallower depth of field when taking family photos. It just looks, I don't know, it looks nice. You remove some visual distractions, really lovely skin tones and like really nice flexibility with the white balance as well. It's really nice. And uh, something I forgot about as well is the four by three aspect ratio. If I had to rank my number one aspect ratio, it would be four by three. I love that extra height you get, especially on the street, you can get people's feet in the frame. So yeah, out and about with the GFX, let's uh, hop into Lightroom and see how these files behave. Right, I'm at home. I'm in Adobe Lightroom. I'm in, which version of Lightroom is this? Uh, Lightroom 2 Judgment Day, I believe. It keeps asking me to update it for some various AI things I'll never use, which I'm in no rush to do. So I've got a few shots with the GFX 100 S2. Just gonna take a look at how the color behaves, how the dynamic range behaves. These have all had a baseline edit of our portobello preset which you can find out more about through the link in the description <laughs> so we've got this first shot that i took in the lily house at kew gardens i'm just going to do a bit of an exposure correction using these sliders bring the highlights down bring the shadows up because i love that filmic look you get from doing this and then just kind of correct the contrast using the white and black point and yeah very happy with that looking really nice and then as you can see just a crazy amount of detail really rich color and then yeah i mean look, look at the reflections here oh super nice really happy with how this looks and that's the thing with these bigger sensors you just do get that yeah amount of detail amount of dynamic range the thing with this camera is it really is meant for like studio work or landscape work it's not really a street photography camera it's very expensive but it's been very very fun to use it um and yeah just seeing the way the files behave in lightroom is really cool uh i've got this shot from a sunset or shooting directly into the sun we've got the uh, i use this part of the bridge to cover the sun so it didn't blow out too much and that's meant yeah there's loads of recovery in the highlights and then i can just uh, yeah give the shadows a bit of a boost and uh i mean really happy with how that looks um yeah you've got that sort of like fall off very subtle fall off with the depth of field that's the thing as well with these big sensors is the depth of field you get fall off from a much further distance if that makes sense there's probably a better way of explaining that someone will explain in the comments if anybody's watching this far into the video uh, let's have a quick look at this one oh, it's just taking a little while to load because these files are 
gigantic. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull back the highlights as well. Yeah, look at that. Bring up the shadows. Add a bit of contrast using the white and black point. Yeah, I mean, it's just so much, so much detail. Nice amount of dynamic range. Pretty happy with this one. Should have really made a print of this. Maybe next time. I really like the flag. That's the main thing. Really sets it off, in my opinion. Uh, just chatting about my own photography. Uh, and then this one of Pigeon, the old uh, Pigeon feather test. Yeah, a lot of details in the feathers. Hor horrible looking feet. I apologize. Sorry for that. Um, let's pull this back as well. Have a bit of a tweak. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I've already done a bit of a crop on this one. Yeah. Oh, pigeons are weird, aren't they? Look at that. But yeah, the detail, as you would expect with 100 megapixels, is just crazy. So um, yeah, bit of fun with these, moving the sliders around. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, if there's anything else you want to know about this camera. Like I said, it's not one I would probably buy because I can't afford it, and it's definitely not meant for like street photography exactly. It's more of a studio or landscape camera, but I do like the way different systems like this get me thinking differently about my photography, get me thinking differently about how I take photos. And I mean, because the files are so big, you just have to take less photos, so you have to be more intentional with it. It's kind of a little bit film-like in that experience, <laughs> in that uh, it, a lot, taking a lot of pictures with this camera is going to cost you money because you're going to need to buy more storage. But um, yeah, big thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe and see you next time.